Welcome to your crash course in studying in Germany. Please turn to page 15 in your textbooks. The basics. Hochschule literally means high school, but it's not like the American high school. In Germany, it's the umbrella term for higher education institutions, which includes the more professionally focused Fachhochschulen and the more academically focused Universitäten. The first university to open its doors for teaching was the University of Heidelberg back in 1386, and today there are colleges and universities all over Germany. Next chapter, applying to university. Some courses follow the numerous clauses system, where the number of people admitted is limited. Successful applicants will have to achieve a minimum final grade in high school and sometimes sit entrance exams. For Zulassungsfreie Studiengänge, or free admission courses, anyone who meets the basic requirements should get a place. Of course, this means they might have to put up with overcrowded lecture halls. Popular courses among female students in Germany include business, law and psychology. And among male students, business, mechanical engineering and computer science. There has been a push over the last decade to get more women into the so-called MINT subjects. That's maths, computer science, natural sciences and engineering. And female admissions to those courses have doubled in that time. Some courses, like medicine and teaching, include state exams. These are held by the state rather than the uni and are there to ensure high standards where it's particularly in the public interest. And finally, page 32, the university system. German universities used to follow the diploma system, but back in 1999, the Bologna process kick-started a move across Europe to standardise higher education. Since then, most German universities have switched over to the bachelor-master system. A whopping 90% of bachelor students at academic universities go on to do a master's. That might in part be explained by the next point. Probably the best thing about studying in Germany the cost. Studying at a private university could set you back tens of thousands of euros, but most universities are state-run and have zero tuition fees. Students here only have to pay the Semesterbeitrag, an admin fee of about 100 to 350 euros per semester. What's more, parents continue to receive child benefit payments for their kids who are in full-time education up until the age of 25. And the perks don't end there. Being a student in Germany will get you all sorts of discounts in cafes and restaurants, on phone contracts and travel. In fact, travel within the region is usually completely free. And for that reason, many people sign up for any old course at uni with no intention of turning up, just for the freebies. You also might hear people talking about getting BAföG. Took me a long time to work out what they were saying. It turns out it's an acronym, short for Bundesausbildungsförderungsgesetz. That's the law governing grants and loans for students. It's means assessed and around a fifth of German students receive it. Of course, students still have to pay for rent, books and food. Around a quarter of students in Germany live with their parents or relatives and around a quarter live in their own flat. 30% live in a VG, which stands for Wohngemeinschaft, literally living community, which is a shared apartment. Most unis also offer spaces in Wohnheim or halls of residence, with small private rooms and shared cooking facilities. These are usually the most economic options, but you have to apply early to get a spot. Germany is a popular destination for international students, based on cost, reputation and an increasing number of courses offered in English. In most cases, foreign students study for free here too. German universities have a good reputation, and yet they don't tend to appear at the very top of international university rankings. This could be down to money, a focus on educating the many, not the few, and the fact that a lot of research in Germany is carried out in dedicated research institutes. Even if these institutes are affiliated with the university, the research is often counted separately. So how important is a degree in Germany? Interestingly, almost 20% of the current members of parliament in Germany don't have a degree. But in certain professions it's obligatory, and in many others it's preferred, and will lead to a higher income on average. Of course, there's more to student life than studying. Also, es gibt immer Partys von den unterschiedlichen Fachschaften und den unterschiedlichen Studiengängen. Und ich glaube, das Leben als Studierender in Deutschland ist auch so ein bisschen aufs auf Feiern ausgelegt. Also Uni ist natürlich in allererster Reihe ein Ort, wo man andere Menschen trifft, wo man gute Freundschaften schließt, wo man das erste Mal Leute trifft, die auch total ähnliche Interessen wie man selbst habe. Und an der Uni kann man sich dann nochmal ganz neu, sozusagen, wenn man erwachsen ist, aussuchen, mit wem möchte ich überhaupt meine Zeit verbringen, mit wem möchte ich meinen Kaffee trinken, so nach der Vorlesung. Es gibt diverse Freizeitangebote, also studentische Hochschulgruppen, ähm, Kunst, Musik, Lesekreise, man kann sich auch politisch engagieren. Hast du vielleicht ein paar Tipps für junge Leute, die gerade über ein Studium nachdenken? Die Aufregung, die man, die man so hat, ist total okay und äh, man darf nie vergessen, es ist für alle neu. Du musst dir Zeit nehmen, das zu finden, wofür du wirklich eine Passion hast, was dich interessiert, womit du dich stundenlang beschäftigen, tagelang, monatelang, jahrelang. Nicht irgendwas nur studiert, weil, keine Ahnung, da gibt es gute Jobchancen oder das 
Hat auch schon irgendwer in meiner Familie gemacht. Wenn es der Geldbeutel und die Eltern zulassen, würde ich mich nicht so stressen, was, was das Studium angeht, sondern die Zeit nutzen. Wenn man viel draus macht, dann kann das eines der besten ja, Lebensabschnitte in einem Leben werden. One quite curious aspect of university life in Germany are the Verbindungen or student fraternities. These societies own property where members can apply to live for very low rent. They organize events and lectures and some uphold traditions such as fencing. Members are seen as members for life, contributing socially and financially to the societies long after graduation. The groups were traditionally men only, elitist and very conservative. From around the 12th century, students across Europe joined together for protection and community. In Germany, students from particular regions formed groups called Landsmannschaften, often distinguished by particular coloured clothing. These days, it's estimated that less than 2% of students are part of a Verbindung. There are groups that remain strongly conservative, with some even plagued by right-wing extremism. But there are also women's and mixed societies, and many, but not all, fraternities have ditched their dueling rituals. Thanks to the many of you who requested and inspired this topic. If you've got any more requests, post them below.